This is Twit. We're about ready now to talk about the Purism laptop. Kyle, it's great to see you. Welcome. Uh, how long have you been at uh, Librem? So I just uh, joined officially full-time in January, but nice. I've been behind the scenes advising for almost since the beginning. Kyle Rankin is the, you're the chief security yeah. officer. Right. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's <laughs> means you're in charge of keeping the most secure laptop in the world secure. Yeah, just, you know, small lifts. Just no, a no little pressure, bit. No pressure. No pressure, <laughs> no pressure at all. No, yeah. no. You, were, you went to DEF CON there and said he said Yeah, we were, Def, Def, we were at DEF CON together. Nice, yeah. We've been there the last couple. I've been, well, it must have been last, every oh, year, I would yeah. have thought. Yeah. So tell me what, why Librem exists. Sure. Um, so, you know, our idea is that there's a lot of options out there for both hardware, software, um, but a lot of them don't really respect the customer. And we so know our, that. Yeah. We know mm. that. Everybody's all upset about Windows 10 phone and home, right? <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. You're right. You're the, you're the product in many cases. Absolutely. Yeah, and so and a lot of them have financial incentives to do that, and it, so it makes sense. Um, for us, we don't necessarily agree with that. And so the idea is to have a laptop that respects the customer and their freedom. So, mm. so and what's interesting, this is Free Software uh, Foundation in pr approved hardware. That means there is no non-free software on here. Mm. Yeah, they've they've approved the OS, and we're there's one little tiny. The, the ME is still waiting for the hardware. The Intel to be management blessed. engine is Man, still yeah. on here. It's, oh yeah, yeah. You a, can't get a, a, a little smidgen of it. That's we not your fault. It. You it's can't, not my fault. It's but, built into the thing, right? What are you going to do? You well, have Intel chips in here. Yeah. So, but we, you know, we both neuter it. So there's this uh, HAP bit that you can set that says please disable, and Good. because we don't trust that, you'd like um, to take we, the hardware out. Yeah. So yeah. we also um, wipe it. All, almost all of the modules that come into the ME, we wipe. And nice. so there's like a, just Excellent. a little snip at the bare minimum. We've tried wiping more and it doesn't boot. So the <laughs> bare minimum, like we want something like 96% of it is zeroed out. This is about I, as good as you're going to get. As good yeah, as you're, gonna get. you're using core boot. You're not using anybody else's boot. System. That's right. It's all free software bias. So you can inspect, you can audit everything. And that's what it is, is, you know, we don't, we're not saying you have to trust us, just like we're not saying you right. trust anybody else. We we have reasons why you should trust us, but even mm. if you don't, you can go through our entire all of our code. You can inspect things. Um, it's all out there in the open. And because all the hardware on here has free software drivers for it, mm -hmm. while you have your own Debian-based OS, you could use pretty much any Linux or BSD OS on here, and they'd work fine. Oh yeah, yeah. If it, if it works. <clears throat> Purely, purely free software drivers, then you yeah. can pretty much anything else. That's always a yeah. problem when you buy a laptop and put Linux oh, on it. Oh, tell me about it. I, know, <clears throat> I mean, but really good news about Intel, because I, for one, am sick about writing stories about ME broken yet again. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah the management engine is terrible. Oh, it's awful. <clears throat> but there is a, a weak link here, mm. and it's the evil maid. What I, if I leave my nice, pure Librem Purism laptop in the hotel room and I go out and have a beer and come back and somebody's gotten in my room and modified this. How do I know that this is not And modified? I've had this happen to me in China. I left my laptop in the room, went down, had dinner, came back and it was switched on. And it's just, it's, you, great, you now, I've now got to junk the laptop because yeah. you cannot trust it. Yeah. They could have put stuff in the firmware on the battery or into the BIOS. Or is just, there a defense against something like that? that well, yeah, I mean, that's, so that's, that's sort of what the problem we're trying to solve because if you, if someone were to modify the BIOS or mm -hmm. put, install a rootkit, <clears throat> since that's the very first code that executes, you can't. What, how you can can't you detect even, a rootkit. How can you yeah. test it? Yeah, yeah. How can you test it? And so the idea is, so we've been partnering with uh, Trammell Hudson, this gentleman who created a system called Heads, and so it runs on top of Core Boot. It's again free software. In fact, it uses reproducible builds, so you don't even have to trust Heads if you worry about something being tampered with along the way. You go get the source you code. You can go get the source build code, it. build it, and match it, and it's fine. Yeah. Um, so we've been working with that to get that on our laptops. Well, and this is so timely with this uh, yeah. super micro exactly. hack. Whether you believe it or not, we know mm. the supply chain is No, no, absolutely. And we know from Snowden mm -hmm. that the NSA will intercept stuff in transit. So where do you have these made, though? They're made in China, I'm sure, right? Yeah, I mean, components of it are for sure. I mean, yeah. but, but put together and assembled here in the U.S. You oh, assemble okay. in the U.S. Under a, in a factory under your control. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's nice. I Excellent. like that. Excellent. Yeah, that's another uh, good thing. It's so you've got heads on here. Heads is it's kind of like doing a hash, right? Of, yeah. It's a secure boot system. Yeah, it's, it's like secure boot. I mean, the main difference is with secure boot, it's saying 
you have to run executables that Microsoft has signed right. and blessed, and you can right. only do that, right? right? And so um, some people that use Debian, for instance, if you go to a secure boot system, Debian doesn't have an executable. I turn off inside. secure boot, right? So you have to turn it off, right? So it's either it's one, or, it's either on or off. You either right. are secure or you're not. Right. And so we, you know, that sort of doesn't comply with how we like our philosophy behind that. We want the user to sort of own the keys to their hardware. So normally, when this boots up, uh, heads will check, make sure nothing has been modified and then say on the screen it's okay? Yeah, so wait, the way that it can, you can trust it, because if someone hacks this, it could just say, yeah, everything's great. You know, yeah, because that, that, that's <laughs> yeah. a screen, they, they, they hacked it, right? Yeah. The yeah. rootkit could say, oh, by the way, say everything's okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so the way that this works is um, this laptop has a TPM chip in it, Okay. and so when you turn on the machine, the BIOS sends measurements over to the TPM. If they match what was set up previously, it unlocks this shared secret um, that gen between you and, without the Librem key, between you and your phone. Mm -hmm. so your phone um, has a secret. Your phone has a secret. So when you <clears> first <throat> set it up, it puts up a QR code on the screen. You take a picture, and you have that same six-digit code if you've ever logged into a website with that. So if system. anybody modifies anything, that code will be... That, it'll, it'll be different, it'll, yeah. You know, like, oh, that's fishy. Uh, okay, and that TPM, the Trusted Platform Module, is basically what we were talking about earlier, a secure yeah. enclave. It's a chip yeah. where stuff is stored securely. And we trust TPM? Um, reasonably enough, I mean, it's small, it's independent from the CPU, you know, I mean, in some cases, you know, free software people have been concerned about it in the past just because it's been used to lock out right. software, mm. but it doesn't have to be, you know, this is almost like the sort of the judo leverage this is, where you yeah. use the good the, TPM. Yeah, the good TPM, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, so it doesn't have to be that way. Right. And so we, you know, you can <clears> wipe <throat> that out and take ownership of your own TPM I and use that. it for your own purposes. I love that. Yeah. Now, as a, as a naturally clumsy and forgetful person, what happens if I lose the USB key? Sure, yes. Yeah, well, so, actually, we haven't gotten to the USB key ah, yet. Okay, sorry. So, <laughs> so right now, it's going to be verified by the phone. And that was yeah. what's new. This is the Librem, uh, Purism Librem key. And it, it is, the idea here is this is like a, one of those traditional, like, uh, uh, Hardware locks, right? Like a YubiKey. Yeah. Uh, so it can generate a one-time password. Generate a one-time password. It can store your, you know, your GPG keys if you use that. I like that. I, I like mm. to keep my GPG key, G key in, a, in a piece of hardware like that. Yeah. And then you keep this on your person. Yeah, you put it in your pocket on your keychain. So the purse. evil maid would have to both pick your pocket and get mm -hmm. into your hotel room. Right. <laughs> right. All right. And so what does this do? Okay. So... Like you said, without integration with anything else, it acts like your standard security token stores your yeah, GPG I, keys. Like, I carry mine like with we me. we all have in our pockets. Yeah, I have yeah. My, my FIDO. This is, this is both, U, this is a YubiKey, but it does UTF and mm -hmm. a one-time password. Yours does not do UTF. Not yet, yeah. Yeah, okay. right now it doesn't. So we partnered with a company called NitroKey, who makes a security token okay. to make the Librem key. Okay. Um, so it, uh, it's open hardware. Nice. So, so right. it's and the firmware is is free software. Okay. And so. all of the user space software is also. That's the reason that we selected them. I mean, YubiKey is great, but that was something that we, you know, that's a principle that we stand behind. Yeah. So we want it to all be open. You you want it all to be out there. So, tell me how I would use this now to validate that my Purism laptop is uh, is secure. Sure. Okay. So you you know you leave the hotel room and you go have dinner and you come back mm -hmm. and now it's running. Yep. And you're concerned. Okay, so you turn it off and you plug in the key. Okay, okay. And now we turn it on. Yeah. And when it boots, because it's now talking to the TPM, which is a, you know, it's a, a slow-ish chip. It's not a big powerhouse of a chip. Right. So it's sending measurements back and forth. Heads is already running. It's already, yeah. already running. Now it's sending measurements back. And now if you look at the key, there's a nice little green LED. It might be hard to see, but I can see. see it. There's a blinking green yeah. light on there. That is essentially saying, okay, everything matches. Yeah, so what it's doing is the same thing your eyes would do with your phone. So on the screen, <laughs> you can see that there's a little six-digit code there. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, know, if you were to ask the user, every time you turn on your computer, get your phone out, they're going to do it once or twice and then say, well, yeah. that's kind of a pain. I don't really want to deal with that and not do it. So we want to make it easier. So what we do is the same thing that's happening on the screen in your phone is happening between the computer and the key. The computer's authenticating itself to the key and proving it hasn't been tampered with. So it's sending that six-digit code over USB to the key. The key um, generates its own six-digit code based on the secret they both have. So if it matches, it blinks green. If it nice. doesn't match, it blinks red. Nice. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. It is, and that's a, a, a tremendously hand, a tremendously handy because, honestly, you don't. On, you know, if you, you you can't have your laptop with you the whole time, so you need to have this kind of backup system, and the fact it's all open source makes it considerably more secure. I would have thought. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's the idea. So, you know, a lot of the other systems are saying it's e it's either the the firmware that's proving all of this is closed for <laughs> secure boot, or it's 
through some vendor, and we're mm -hmm. saying, you know, we, it's all free software. Trust so you, no one. Yeah, you don't yes. have to trust even us, even right. though you, we're the vendor. You don't have to trust the vendor. You can take all of this and then say, I don't trust the TPM. You know, the mm -hmm. ideal with this is we will be able to set it all up at the factory. And right. so it's right. all ready to go. It's not hard. So it's but easy for the But if you're Mr. Robot, you're getting all of this and you're putting all new stuff you're on You're wiping it all out <laughs> You're wiping it and starting mm -hmm. from scratch. Yeah. Now, nothing's perfect, of course. There's probably no, no still attack is, vectors on yeah. this. But, but that's a heck of a lot better than a Windows or a Macintosh machine or uh, a Chromebook. Yes. Well, and we get, a, you know, we get a lot of customers that request, they, they live overseas, and they say, hey, I'm, I'm concerned about someone intercepting my laptop after I buy it, messing with it before it gets to us. And so you know, that's something we already deal with today, and sometimes we do extra. We have an anti-interdiction service that for people that request that we can do. This adds a whole other level to that. So mm. you send these under separate cover. Separate yeah. cover. We set it all up at the factory. We send one. Um, ideally, the best security protocol would be send, send the key first. Mm. They have the key, and then send the laptop second. Yeah. And then when they both arrive, you plug them in together. And if and they don't so match, they don't match. It doesn't match. Yeah. You jump up and down. And yeah. It's a red spot, <laughs> and you get the screen, <clears throat> screen going red as well. So there's an extra warning uh, uh, when things go wrong. Yeah, I mean, we can simulate that if you want. You want to, you want to mm. yeah, How much is, is the uh, is the Purism laptop? So the laptop, this is a 13-inch, so this starts at uh, 13.99. Not bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can, of course, upgrade it. And the uh, key? The key is uh, 59. Okay, 60 so, bucks. Yeah. So I have to say, Ian and I are both thinking about I've, maybe I've, we should I know, get I'm kind of thinking, thinking seriously yeah. about this now. Okay, uh, so, so now this is the code that you would use your phone to scan because you've changed... The knots. You've changed the secret key. Yeah. Mm. So the idea to simulate someone tampering <clears throat> is I'm going to change the secret key, but not plug the the Librem key in. So the laptop has one secret. The the Librem key has. We a didn't separate update secret. this key. You can do that though, right? Oh yeah. That's yeah. this is you know if you don't trust us, you get the everything Start up. Over, you can update the key. Or you lose the key. When you lose the key, you can still boot. You just hit enter. You just. You but know. what's happened is the evil maid has gotten in here, mm. has put some root kit on this, <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the keys no longer match. Right. So now I'm going to tell it to skip the key. It's going to try again. Just Should I put the key it. in? Go ahead and plug it in. Yeah. Okay. So we come in. Your laptop's on, Ian. Oh, no. <laughs> Quick, stick your Librem key in there, boot up, and we shall see what happens. Now, again, we can't trust this screen. But you can certainly <clears> see the flashing red light. But look, yeah. it's red. That means something's gone wrong. Somebody's been modified your, your, your boot. Yeah, and so if you're in, if you're a customer at home who this happens to, if you're sophisticated, you would then do some sort of you know forensics or something. Mm. The average person may not be able to do that, in which case they could work with us yep. to you know do a factory sweep and make sure this nice and ah, clean. Interesting. You know, if you're an enterprise, it's even you know there's a lot more. You'll options. have an image that you mm. use. You have you could send it. To, you could have a customized message that says, "Hey, send this to IT." <laughs> you, you know, prevent someone from booting because do, they do just a lot can, of yeah. enterprises buy the uh, Purism laptops. I mean, we're, we continue to get interest from a lot of. People. I bet. I want to do yeah. that, especially now that we have with the key. There's even more interest because there's, you know, a lot of developers already have a key on them anyway for yeah. signing code and everything. And so having something that's all a convenient bundle makes a lot of sense. You could use this for that signing key, absolutely, and yeah. everything else. Yeah, just don't lose it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although if you lost this, you still have your phone. Yeah. If you lost it, you still have your phone, so you can verify this. If you right. lose it, you know, if you're putting your your private keys on there, then ideally you back them up somewhere else. Like That's what always has made yeah. me nervous about putting my GPG key on here. You got to have a secure store somewhere else in case yeah. it does. To yes, and it a, another physical location as well in case the house yeah. burns down. Yes. Yeah. What do you think? I like it. I we, like this a lot. You're going to take it to DEF CON next year? Should we uh, I've, I'm leave it, leave it you, lying did you, did you, around on the table? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the great thing is, you know, when I go to DEF CON, if I'm concerned about the network, I just hit the kill switch and the wireless is off. Yeah. Open my laptop up and, you know. Wow. I was going to say, you don't honestly use the DEF CON wireless network, do you? Yeah, I just turn it off and... Use it. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Excellent stuff. I'm thinking now about, about one of these. Now, yeah. <clears throat> what do you call the OS that you run on here? So we run Pure OS. Um, it's a, f a fork of Debian. It's based off of Debian. Um, Debian testing. The, Debian told. testing. Yeah. yeah, the main difference is we take Debian testing and we remove all um, non-free code. Right. Um, mm. So that's how we get the Free Software Foundation endorsement yeah. is by removing all of that. But other than that, if you're used to Debian, it's very, it's very similar. Right. Um, experience that the goal is for that to be super convenient. There is a Debian non-free ISO you can get that yeah. would, would probably also work if you wanted to yeah. stay pure. I love it that you don't need any of those non-free drivers. Mm. Right, yeah. So that I means it, if it, right. if it, I mean, if it works with no non-free drivers, then you know that you can put Love whatever. That. I mean, including Cubes, which is also Cubes is very That's what particular. You use. Yeah, I yeah. use Cubes. 
And Cubes is a, everything sandboxed. All processes are sandboxed. That's so right. no process can talk to another process. There's no hacking possible. Yeah, you're, a, you're paranoid. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. That's all. And this will work with Cubes. Yeah, out yeah. of the box. Yeah. Really nice. Really nice. Excellent. Kyle Rankin, Chief Security Officer for Purism. They make the Librem laptop and now the Librem key. So you could be even more And a secure. phone coming too, is what I understand it. Phone coming too, yeah. When, when is that going to be out? Um, it's coming out in April. So we're, right now we're working on dev kits. So we have a, a huge interest from the developer community to as a, a nice Linux-based platform for a phone. So, mm. so it's not Android? Not Android, not Android, but there's plenty of those to choose from. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, so we're trying something different. And so we have a big developer community that's interested in work, oh, developing applications for yeah. the phone. And so we have dev kits right now that we're shipping out. They've, people have purchased. We're working on them now, and then in in April. In the meantime, everyone will be writing applications. Right. Then in April, we come and launch the phone. Come back then, will you? Come back. Yeah, yeah I, I really want to want to see more. Because I mean, you also you've got the manufacturing experience. You're not going to run into the same problems that that the Black Phone had, which which got killed off just by. Yeah, you know, we talked to Phil Zimmerman. He, I yeah. felt bad for him because it was a, of course, the right idea. Yeah. He said it's just hard to build a phone. Yeah. It's a tough thing to do. Yeah. Hardware's hard. That's yeah. why they call it hardware. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Kyle Rankin, CSO of Purism. P U R dot I S M. A P U R I dot, dot S M. S -M. Yeah. <laughs> P there it is. Never know where to put that dot. P U R I. Puri dot S M. Yeah. Love it.